All right, what's going on on this fine day? All of you trash talkers, assholes, and anybody paying any attention to anything. What is going on? Uh, you missed the show last week. I did not put one out. I had a lot going on in my life uh, that legitimately forced me to take a week off of everything and focus on uh, life around me. So um, we're back. Here we are. This is not going to be quite as long, uh, but it's going to be me you know, discussing what's going on with me currently, uh, what's coming up, and what I've been doing for the last week. So let's dive into it. So I took a week off initially because uh, my father had passed, and um, I was there for that, and it, it wasn't the best, didn't go in the best way and it, it destroyed my mom, absolutely destroyed her. And uh, they've been together for coming up on 45 years, so they've never known anyone else. And so I kind of had to, you know, take a step back and I had to do a whole lot and just try and get my mom in the right direction and try and pick up the pieces and move forward. So that that's, that's something that, that took a major toll and I, I didn't expect to have the issues that I had with that and um, I'm trying to work through it. Um, it's been kind of more exhausting than I realized, you know, um, when you lose somebody and then when you plan all of their death shit uh, on top of that, when you didn't plan on doing all that, it takes a lot out of you because you didn't realize, you, you just don't realize what you have to do that you never had to do. Um, so my father passed from an aortic rupture. Uh, basically not much they could do, but I watched as, you know, eight to 10 doctors and nurses round Robin took their turn pumping his chest and giving him like eight shots of epinephrine and just nothing worked. But I just watched as my mom just begged and pleaded, please don't leave me, uh, amongst other things. And it was just, uh, it was truly depressing. It, it was very sad to watch my mother watch her whole life disappear in front of her. Uh, and she just, she thought it was a dream. She, she could not handle what was going on. And I don't for a second blame her because uh, it bothered me too, but I, I had to be strong for her so one of us could try and figure some stuff out. And it was difficult, um, but more so difficult just watching my mom in that state. Uh, it really made me sad. So um, that in turn affected everything uh, around me. Um, I didn't realize how much it was going to hit me. I didn't realize how much it was going to bother me. Um, uh, it affected everything. Work, my home life, uh, definitely my workouts. Uh, my workouts, prepping for this USPA Nationals, I've been doing very well. And when I would go to the gym, which for me is very often, I mean, it was like I was done when I got there. Like I just could not unpack. I could not get my my body going and excited and I wanted to but my brain it's like my brain was just so weighted down I just couldn't get into it couldn't get there I was there I just couldn't mentally get there and it, it that that alone that's something that wore me out um, and I was struggling and it's not good for me because this is not the time to struggle. Like this is the biggest competition of my life and all of a sudden coming to the finish line, somebody throws a wrench in my spokes and now I'm trying to react and, and survive and finish. You know, at this point, to be perfectly honest, I'm not gonna get what I want out of this competition. I'm, I already know I, I, there's a good chance I'm not gonna hit the numbers I wanna hit. And my, my, my training cycle is it's kind of taking a hit. So it's fine. Uh, I'm going to do the absolute best I can. 
hopefully go into that day with an absolutely clear mind uh, and just a heart full of rage and emotion and, and strength to try and push through and just do my damn best. And honestly, that's, that's all you can expect out of yourself is to do the best you can. And I hate how cliche that sounds, but it's true. I don't expect to give two thirds of my best. Uh, I'm going to give everything I can. I don't care if I pass out. I don't care if I collapse. I am going to do the damn best I can so I can be proud of myself afterwards and look back and be excited with what I did. Um, everything goes right. I'll go to the IPL Worlds competition in November and that'll be even bigger. So I look forward to that as well. If not, then I'll skip Worlds and I'll have until April for the next Nationals. And that one will be at Atlanta. And I'm excited about that because Everything's been in California so time so far, so so I'm excited to uh, take my wife and take my team and go to Atlanta. So we'll see. Um, other than that, I've just been working my day job, working my work, trying to deal with mammoth, you know, um, push all of that, keep up on orders, try to prep new ideas, you know. Uh, fall is coming. So, I, of course, I'm going to have to start getting some sort of hoodie design and all that figured out because all you East Coast fucks, I know you get all cold, you know, way sooner than us on the West Coast. So, don't worry. Mammoth got your back. I'll get things figured out. So, there's that. Um, I got this sweet American flag I got on eBay. Gigantic. Look at this thing. And it's, yeah, it's big bigger than it looks but you know nothing screams America like a gigantic sewn real American flag uh, hey, it's surrounded by top-notch weights uh, and a great lifter you know me but back to what I was saying uh, I'm excited also uh, this competitions in Palm Springs and Palm Springs is about 45 minutes from my base in 29 Palms. So I'm pretty excited. Uh, I'll also, also on that note, two of my Marines I have not seen in like 17 years are going to be there. So very excited to uh, see, you know, my couple Marines that I haven't seen in forever while also taking my wife and probably them to the base and showing them around, going to the PX, doing all that stuff. So really excited for that. You know, get on base, let some uh, old memories flood through and, you know, exciting times like that, you know, go hit the old uh, Mexican taqueria place that we used to love to go to, you know, uh, good times, just being a, <laughs> just being a drunk Marine and, and you just wanna just get some good food before you go back to the barracks. So you stop over there at Santana's on Adobe Road in 29 Palms, which is now Castaneda's. Uh, and you just get the carne asada fries or California burrito and top it off after a nice drunk night out in town. And you go back and you sleep one off and you wake up and do PT at five in the morning smelling like alcohol and grease. Those were the days, alcohol and grease. When you're in a running formation with 30 other dudes and that's all you smell is vodka creeping out of pores. Kind of miss it. But I, I kind of don't. Those are tiresome days. Uh, some, some, some poor guys uh, like a old big Earl still got to deal with uh, the machine. Still got to deal with all that stuff. Some of us are out already and it's kind of nice. But, yeah, so excited. Gonna hit the base, slam through the PX a little bit, hit up some local shops and stuff that I remember, um, and then hit my comp, and then after my comp, a little bit of downtime. So, I'm really excited. It's gonna be a great week. Hopefully far better on these last two weeks, but it's also been a long time coming. Been prepping for this since February, so, 
<sighs> February, March, April, May, June, and here in July now. So lot, lots of work put in to get to this point uh, to train against guys coming from all over the country, Montana, Michigan, New York, etc. cetera. Uh, so who doesn't love some good competition? So I love it. Um, my head and my heart are in a little bit better position. Still not out of the, uh, still not out of the woods with my family, uh, you know, and dealing with, with all of that, you know, the mess of that situation. But much better off, much further along, and um, excited for the future. You know, um, I know my dad would have hated it if he knew everyone was boohooing over him and just sad as shit all the time. As much as it's funny, because as much as my dad's that way, he also would have liked the attention. It's like he would have liked it, but he's not gonna ask for it. Uh, so he would have been mad that we're all boohooing, but he would have enjoyed that everyone is paying attention. Uh, and it's funny, I come to find it also from other people close to him. You know, I guess he used to talk about me and how proud of me he was and all these things. And my dad was never, it never really was too into that because he wasn't really big on I love yous. Uh, or the I'm proud of yous, I, you know, I don't, I know my memory's bad from TBI and all that shit, but I don't remember hearing that kind of stuff hardly ever. So finding out from other people that he would talk like that, it kind of made me feel good. You know, nice to know that when I wasn't around, he really was proud and he really was talking and saying things. So that, that makes me feel good to know that that, that side really did kind of exist. Uh, and he was becoming a, a softy kind of guy, but yeah, no, that was nice to know. But um, yeah, anybody close to me knows this. Uh, this has been really rough, uh, and uh, I miss my father. And I just, uh, I hope he didn't struggle. Uh, I hope it wasn't, you know, really bad. From, from what I hear, everything, it seems the theory is that it was is an instant kind of thing. And I'm just hoping, uh, I'm just hoping he didn't struggle because uh, everything else I've heard so far from everyone else that was around him that day was he was great. He was having a great day, good mood, no problems, no complaints, no body complaints. It was it just something that just, boom, it happened and it was like a ton of bricks and it was over. Um, my mom and I just kind of saw the after effect, you know, we saw the, I guess you could say the ninth inning. Um, so I'm just hoping that, uh, hoping he's just better where he's at. And as much as nobody wanted to see him go, uh, I'm just, I don't know. I, I don't want to say I'm glad he's not in pain anymore because he, for the most part, wasn't until just it hit, but. You, you just hope your loved one's in a better place or if they're aware, you know, that they're happy. I don't know. I don't know how that works. Uh, everyone's got their opinion. It is what it is. Uh, for my mental health and clarity, uh, I just hope it's something good. Uh, because, you know, there's been some moments where you just wonder... You know, why him? Or, you know, why them? Whoever it is in your life. And you, you hate the fact that you lost someone that you loved or you cared about so much. And you see other people around that, you know, you don't want to say, you know, that person doesn't deserve to live. But you see someone else that is just fucking up in life. And it looks like they really don't care. And they're doing nothing to benefit anybody or help anyone in life. And they're just pissing away life. And then someone good, you know, passes, and that's why you wonder why. But it is what it is, you know. Um, my dad lived a very long uh, and pretty good life. You know, everything he wanted to do, he pretty much wound up doing uh, or did it in his way, you know. So no complaints there. Uh, and the funny thing, I'll tell this funny story, we're, we're getting ready to wrap up, is uh, my family is the Navy, just lifetime Navy, like since the damn 
the day somebody carved a boat out of a tree, my family's been in the damn Navy. Uh, and it came time, you know, high school was nearing an end and I had to figure something out. And I picked the Marine Corps and my family hated it and they hated me for it. <laughs> I, I ruined the tradition uh, of that. But I went in the Marines and, you know, they're, they're decently proud at boot camp when I graduated. You know, that was fine. That was whatever. Um, but really, when I found out I was going to Iraq and my parents knew I was in the grunts and, and I'd be in the front and we were one of the units that was the first in, it's like a flip, uh, a switch flipped and my family got excited and happy and, and motivated and and just gathered a lot of stuff locally to send over and, and totally changed and became totally proud. And I got to see that and, and I loved that because, you know, at this point, you know, I'm sorry I didn't go in the Navy, but now your baby boy went to go get into combat and get in, get in the mess, get in the shit. Uh, and everybody came along. Uh, and thankfully I made it back so, uh, we didn't have to do all that other stuff, so. But glad everybody came on board. But yeah, I ruined, I ruined the Navy heritage. Even though we're still a department of the Navy, uh, I just didn't, <laughs> I didn't go in the Navy. So, but that's that. So, we're gonna stop it here for the day. Uh, don't forget to get up over to Veteran Trash Talk. Click uh, the subscribe button on YouTube. Uh, like. Instagram, Facebook, pick up some Veterans Trash Talk merch, like the famous Veterans Trash Talk button, support some uh, fellow uh, sailors, airmen, devil dogs, and uh, army guys, and uh, uh, let's, let's keep gro uh, growing our community. Uh, also check out mammothpowercompany.com, hit up all our merch, hats, hoodies, long sleeves, short sleeves, tanks, etc. Uh, everything you can find at www.mammothpowercompany.com we also have an Instagram and a Facebook page uh, and free shipping on anything over $50 so get at it that's it Mammoth Power Company this is the Mammoth on Veterans Trash Talk channel out